Sasha. <laughs> I am not a fan of Kenobi. I don't hate this show, I just think it kinda sucks. So over the past few months, Disney's been announcing a lot of Star Wars shows. Like a lot, like a ridiculous amount. We got announcements for stuff like Andor and Acolyte, which seem whatever. But the one that everyone was excited for was this one. And as everyone loves Obi-Wan, it would be in Disney's best interest to make this show as good as they can make it. And with the almost bottomless pit of money, it wouldn't be that hard to do so. But what we got instead was another one of the standard six episode cookie cutter shows. When it was announced that they were bringing back Kenobi for a show, I was hyped. I was excited. I never thought they were going to do something like this. And uh, yeah, they took that potential and obliterated it. It's like winning the lottery and then burning all of the money. I'm not of the opinion that the show has to be perfect. Perfect. But I'm also not of the opinion that we should be happy we're just getting Star Wars. You could maybe make that argument when the only thing planned to release was one season of The Mandalorian, but that was years ago. This is also such a brain-dead argument. It's like going to a five-star restaurant and the food being utter garbage, but you pay the bill anyway and think, eh, at least I got food. No, you'd be disappointed. You expect a level of quality with these shows, and Disney has proven they can make quality Star Wars. Look at Rogue One or The Mandalorian. There should be a sweet spot in the middle where we should be happy we're getting good Star Wars. After the last season of Mando, the quality in these shows really fell off. Mando was good, Boba Fett was passable, this is subpar. We'll get into that later, but let's go over what I like first, because the show isn't bad, it just sorta sucks. I like Kenobi, I like Anakin, both of them are good, but that's kind of a given. They are both putting in their all, and it shows. I like the flashback stuff, all the Order 66 nonsense. I would watch an entire show of just that, just flashbacks. I love shit like this, give me more child murder. This doesn't really connect to anything, but I, I like this this homeless clone. This was this was a nice touch. But anyway, they managed to sprinkle in little nuances in the fight choreography. It's reminiscent of choreography in the past. This one in particular is in Return of the Jedi. These scenes give me little hits of dopamine to keep me going. But that's really where the show peaks. They show you this cool stuff and then blend it in with the most mediocre shit ever to try and make you think this show is good. It's a whole lot of nothing with some cool stuff every once in a while. Like they will create a plot hole here and then show you Anakin without his suit on. And be like, actually wait, maybe that wasn't that bad. The acting for the most part is pretty solid. Nobody's dragging down the show by their performance. NPC background characters do not count. Inquisitors do not count. For all the hate that Reva's getting, she did a good job. She was just written this way. Don't shit on the actor, she was working with what she had. Also, why are you sweaty losers shitting on Leia? She is 8 years old. Can we not get a Jake Lloyd repeat? You guys bullied him off the face of the planet. Let this girl keep her life. I like how every episode is a callback to the movies. Episode 1, we're on Tatooine, little pod racing kid. Episode 2, we go to a city, like on Coruscant. Episode 3, it's the same final battle, it's just inverted. You get the idea. The best part of the show was Obi-Wan's arc. His story was really good. His realization and acceptance was engaging to watch. For half the show, he renounced the Jedi and wouldn't use the Force. Like, he had to fight without the Force. Over the course, he grew to accept his place. He was like, you know what? I gotta do this. That's about everything that I like. Let's get into what I don't like. Off the rip, the CGI is hilariously bad. Look at this scene. This is just shitty. I don't know how they created this scene and thought, yeah, this looks believable. This is also in the first episode. Let me tell you my thought process. I strap into my seat. Oh shit, it's the new Kenobi episode. This scene fucking plays. I had to pause the episode to mentally process what I just witnessed. The level of quality for the entire show is just on par with a fan film. And that was really disappointing. The one thing Disney usually got right was the quality. Most fight scenes in recent years have looked pretty good, but they took a huge nosedive in the show. Having these close up behind the shoulder shaky cam is unbearable. I cringe because this is what fan films do, but it's not just the fighting, it's the sets too. The Vader castle looks terrible. It looks so cheap, and I don't understand why there's such a divide between quality. Episode 4 might have been filler, but it was shot really well. Let me get shit like this. What is this? And yeah, this is just my personal nitpick, but having the show shot like this takes me out of the experience. It's laughable and pulls you out of the story. And speaking of the plot, it's it's nothing new. We've seen this cookie cutter story already, and it's something I've come to expect with these shows. We have our protagonist who must save a young child from the Empire. It's gotten to the point where they are forcing the story story in, like it was an original story when they did it in Mando, and then they also did it in Bad Batch, and at this point it was like, okay, it's the same story, it's just reskin characters. Now it's pretty obvious that they're just reusing stories. I refuse to believe the writers are that lazy. 
The thing is, they could have easily avoided this. They don't need to include Leia. Like, that could have easily been cut out. This could have been a story centered around Luke, without having him ever actually come in contact with Ben or Vader. Remember in A New Hope when Vader and Ben meet for the first time and he says this? When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. He was talking about this scene. Not this one, but this one. Them meeting before this encounter clashes with what we already know. But this isn't the first time the show almost convolutes another Star Wars property. So in the second episode, Reva stabs the Grand Inquisitor, basically killing him. It's a big fuck you. It's a huge plot hole, basically shafting rebels. But then they bring him back in the fifth episode. So they managed to create a plot hole and also fill that hole in one season. But like, why why even open this hole in the first place? What was the point? I remember before the show came out, everyone was shitting on the design of the Grand Inquisitor and how his face is like too fat. He isn't even in the show for that long to warrant a reaction. But like, yes, he looks super different from Rebels, but Rebels also had toothpick lightsabers. But they also did a live action version of the same species of the Grand Inquisitor. So it's this weird back and forth, but who really cares anymore? Also, getting stabbed means nothing in this show. Both Reva and the Grand Inquisitor get stabbed, and because they were angry, they could live on. Besides all of that, I actually liked all the Alderaan stuff. Like, Little Leia did fine, but that does not mean it's void of its own share of nonsense. In this scene, these goblins are chasing after Leia, which is already pretty weird. Like, these grown men are chasing after a little girl. But the fact that these grown adults can't catch an 8-year-old is embarrassing. Also, they get stopped by branches. Branches, yeah. Not once, not twice, but three separate times. Not trees, not big thick trees, little skinny branches. There's also some goofy scenes like this trench coat scene. Yeah, Layla, come under my trench coat and we'll just walk out of here. And there's this other scene where Obi-Wan jumps into the vent right in front of the stormtroopers like they didn't see his foot because they're literally in the same frame. But it's, it's goofy, it's whatever, I don't really care. The stakes in this show are non-existent, but that's a pretty common occurrence when writing a show that takes place in an already existing story. Most of the characters in the show cannot die because they already exist later down the line. We know Luke isn't going to die, we know Leia isn't going to die, same with Vader and Obi-Wan, so that's already most of the cast. If most of the cast can't die, then you've done something wrong. The way the prequels got around this was by introducing other characters that don't appear later down the storyline and have us latch onto them and there's some sort of emotion when they eventually do die. But this show doesn't have the time to develop these emotional beats because it just doesn't have the time. It goes back to the six episode format, which really doesn't work when you're trying to develop some sort of emotion. They try to get us to care about this character, I don't know her name because it doesn't matter, and this droid, and they expect us to care when they kill these characters off in the next episode. It's laughable because no nobody knows these characters. We've barely been introduced to them. So killing them off is like killing a stormtrooper. It does nothing for the audience. I was excited to see Hayden Christensen return as Anakin and Vader. We do get a little bit of Hayden Christensen as Anakin outside the suit in these flashbacks. They are few and far between. They're literally in one episode. But Vader isn't menacing. He feels puny. Even Rebels was able to make him seem more sinister. He doesn't bring that energy. Compare these two Vader scenes. This one from Rogue One and this one from Kenobi. You see the difference? One actually looks menacing and the other looks fan-made. The locations that they go to in this show are way more diverse than others, but in true Star Wars Disney fashion, they somehow always loop back to the same desert planet. But here, we get either super dark shots, like this, like what the fuck is this, we can't see this, or the desert planet. Most of the show is either those two, and the in-between we get is either these dark buildings or dark environments. I was confused on Reva's character as a whole, as she was this little youngling in the flashback at the beginning, which is cool, I understand that. She doesn't like Vader, I get that too. And she wants to kill him, that makes sense. But she doesn't want help from Obi-Wan. Uh, okay. She also wants to hunt Ben for Vader. Makes even less sense. And then use that to try to kill Vader. I'm sorry, what is the, what is the plan here? She wants to solo Vader? There is no way she thinks she can stand a chance. Like, there's no way she thought, oh yeah, I can take him. Reva is not this menacing figure. She had potential to be one, to be a good character, but she did get cucked. Let's talk about the finale for a little bit. I will be the first to admit I genuinely enjoyed the finale. It was the only episode that I had a fun time with, and that was exclusively because of the final battle. At this point, I don't give a shit if it breaks canon. This is some of the coolest Star Wars I've seen in ages. Obi-Wan going fucking Super Saiyan and obliterating Vader, and it gets even better when they do this stuff. When they do this. Are you kidding me? My knees buckled when they did this. The Vader mask scene is so... 
Oh, oh my god, so good. But this episode isn't perfect. Throughout the whole fight, we keep cutting back to Reva trying to kill Luke. Yeah, come on. So we know he's not going to die because, well, he can't. So this whole storyline is incredibly dull and avoidable. They could have killed Reva and have her stay dead. And that would have been the end of it. I do like Reva's redemption at the end, but it was kind of expected. These last two episodes may have been good, but in no way redeemed the rest of the show. 70% of the show is very much below average. There are some cool, interesting story elements sparsely sprinkled in, but besides that, it's bare. The first few episodes do not have that energy, and frankly, this could have been cut into a movie. These episodes usually run around half an hour minus credits. You could easily edit the filler out, re-edit it, and have a nice two and a half hour film. But what we've gotten from this show doesn't justify its own existence. We don't really need to see this story. It's cool that we got it, but it wasn't necessary. It's actually only caused more issues than it's solved. There is a lot of poor elements that don't do anything, and in regards to a season two, it just isn't needed. Even though I've been shitting on this show the whole time, I do think it wrapped itself up well enough. It had a good ending, and we do not need to see this story continue. The Kenobi show is a 5 out of 10. I don't hate it, but it does kind of suck.